What's going on, everybody? We're gonna answer some questions today. So please feel free to leave any questions or comments you have, and I will try to get to as many as I can. Anyways, let's get right to it. Sean, what do you think is the best way to train your ears in order to improve your perception of music? Now, this is a great question. Uh, learning by ear is a great way to learn any instrument, and training your ears is a really important thing to do. So I've got a couple of suggestions maybe that you could do. The first thing I can't stress hard enough is to be able to try and play what you can hear. So any kind of melody that you can hum or think of in your head, try to play it on a guitar just by searching around. Don't even think about scale shapes or whatever, just kind of like experiment and find it. And eventually your, your brain makes the connections between your ears and your fingers and then you don't have to think about it anymore. Kind of something like, uh, like happy birthday, right? Like, like everybody knows what that sounds like. Maybe if you just start trying to like find the first note in any key, you could be here. And then you have that and then, no, that's not right. No, that's not right. It's gotta go higher. And eventually you, you'll find yourself guessing closer to being right than wrong after just doing it for a little bit. What you're doing is you're just, you're training unbeknownst to you different scale shapes into it. Now one important thing to think about is try to go across the strings. I think the, the inclination when you first start is to just maybe take one string and be like, and go up a string. But really as a use, I mean, that's still good for training your ears, but as a useful guitar technique, it's gonna be much more efficient later on and you're gonna be happier being able to, being able to do things in one hand shape. So really just kind of hunt and peck around for different things. Uh, another great thing to do is uh, like, if you're just like kicking it, watching TV or a movie or whatever, there's, there's always music going on in any kind of media. So if you're watching like a TV show, there's always gonna be some kind of subtle background music going on and just have a guitar in your hands and just try to maybe play notes that are gonna fit with the music. It doesn't have to be the exact melody of what's going on, but if you just kind of find out using your ears and connecting what's happening on the TV to what you're playing, you're uh, training yourself to find what key that song is in, stuff like that, even if you're not consciously thinking about it. Also, commercials usually will have like kind of annoying music with like really distinct melodies in it. That's a great way to just try to mirror what's happening and be able to translate what's going on in your head to what you're actually playing. Now, another thing you can do to, to really more formally train your ears is you can get like an app or something on your phone. Like I've got this phone called Better Ears. It used to be called Carajan or something, but I think they changed the name on the, on the latest update. And what it does is it'll actually play a tone for you, right? It'll play like a, like an A or something. And it could be something just like that. It'll play a tone and then it'll ask you what it is. And you could be like A, G, G sharp, A flat, whatever. And it'll tell you how close you are. And just doing that for a couple minutes, you'll really start to get an idea of what different pitches are. Cause everything in the world has like a pitch because everything is vibrating. Like traffic has a pitch. Your air conditioning hum has a certain pitch associated with it. And the more thoughtful you can be about these things, the better it is for you, your musicianship. Uh, another really cool thing on apps like that is interval training. And I think interval training is something that guitar players in general find really helpful. And what I mean by that is like, if you have, it'll give you like a, an interval of distance between two notes, like a, and then it'll ask you, is that a fifth? Is that a fourth? And at first it might just seem like you're guessing, but over time it really tightens your ear and then you'll be much better at being able to play what you hear in your head. And that's kind of the ultimate goal of any instrument anyways. What did you play at the three minute 50 second mark? It sounded really cool to me. So I've actually been getting a lot of questions on some of the, the music that I play during the demos and the lessons and stuff. And for the most part, it's usually stuff that I've written or co-written that are in different projects of mine. Uh, the song that he's actually referencing is something on a, an album I'm working on right now that has been like a huge project and undertaking. It should be ready in a couple months. But if you wanted to check out some of the stuff I've been doing, uh, I'm gonna put this up probably later today. It's called Pack and Go. It's a project I've done with a friend of mine. His name is Andreas. And he's a really awesome musician and his background is like straight up like Spanish slash flamenco stuff. And I have more of like an alt rock rock background. So we collaborated to kind of write a bunch of songs together and get a bunch of local musicians kind of involved in the recording of it. And uh, we ended up with this kind of fusion that's just like a really kind of laid back, chill, somewhat jazzy, somewhat alt, somewhat Spanish kind of project. Uh, I'll probably just throw it up on YouTube. It's on iTunes and Spotify. I'll link you down below. I also have a music video that is potentially very embarrassing that I'm probably gonna post later this week. So yeah, if you wanna check that out, let me know what you think, that'd be cool. What was your preferred guitar to study on at first? 
So I'm like the SG Gibson and I like the Yamaha acoustic. Well, the thing that I started on actually was a really cheap Squire Starcaster. is like a Strat, something like that. And uh, it was used and I just got it from like a friend who kind of tried and, and quit. And honestly, it was really a great, great starter guitar. The number one thing you're looking for in your first guitar is something that's just, that's just gonna stay in tune. Uh, a lot of the cheaper guitars have a tendency to slip out of tune a lot and quite easily. So when you first start, you're gonna suck a guitar anyways. So it's really detrimental to suck and be out of tune because you'll be getting better and you won't even know it because you're out of tune all the time. So uh, that's why it's really important to have a tuner with you or on your phone or whatever to be able to check your tuning, especially in the early days, because then you'll develop better habits and just kind of like we talked about with the ear training earlier, that's just gonna go really well. Uh, the Yamaha acoustics are awesome, especially for the money. I think you can get them for like, you know, between, you can get them like a hundred bucks used, sometimes even less. And uh, really the same principles apply. A lot of people will say that you should start on an acoustic over an electric. I don't necessarily think that's true. I mean, if you learn one, you're gonna learn the other. The reason they say that is because acoustic strings tend to have thicker strings. So they're actually harder on your hands at first. And then if you do go electric, it's, it's an easier transition. I don't necessarily subscribe to that. I mean, that is true, but if you can play one, you can play the other. Really just get what you want and what you think you're gonna be more inspired to play. So this week, I want you to listen to a song by Muse called Knights of Sidonia. One of the greatest songs ever written, in my opinion. Definitely probably one of the top five songs about space cowboys having a laser fight on Mars. Anyways, besides this being an awesome music video, an awesome song, there's a really good musical arrangement behind this, and it's, a, it's really a masterclass in using a chord progression and having it start on one chord and move throughout a series of chords and modulations to end on a different chord that you're going for, and then using the whole arrangement and moving that down two steps. I'm gonna link you to the tab because there are a lot of chords, so it's tough to memorize at first, but they all move in a certain way. And even though it's like a long progression, like. It moves with a purpose. And if you actually look at the chords, you'll see that it's one long progression that gets moved down two full steps and then down two more full steps, which eventually ends up ending on the place it started. So I really think it's just kind of like a genius rock composition and something that will really help with your awareness of just how chord progressions move. So definitely check out Muse and for sure hit me up with any questions you might have. Thanks.